Code me a snake game using Flutter. And so it'll give you some code. And let's paste this in to see if it actually works. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Now I'm going to build a snake game using ChatGPT and I'm going to sort of go through two different approaches when using ChatGPT to help you code and create stuff. So I've opened up a brand new Flutter project and I've just got a blank scaffold here. So it's just a blank app. Now I'm going to come over here to ChatGPT. Code me a snake game using Flutter. Now, just the fact that it's just spitting out code, I'm still to this day in shock. It's like such a cool thing. Now, if you've ever used ChatGPT, you would know that there's like a limit to how much it outputs for each uh, prompt. So if it gets stuck, just tell it to continue. Now, from my experience, you should tell it specifically if you're going to do code to continue the code in a code editor box. Otherwise, it'll just spit out the just plain text and that's really hard to copy and paste. Okay, so I think this is all good, but just upon surface level inspection, I think something is missing there. But let's have a look. I'm just going to copy this. So I'm going to replace everything I've got. Okay, I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. And I think there was a second half to this code, right? Yep, let's copy this and paste it in. Now let's just fix this up. Yeah, I thought there was something missing here. It shouldn't just end like that. And looks like I have a parentheses too many. What about this? It needs a late initializer. Uh, what's this called? Snake game. Okay, so if I save this and I run it, then wow, it's just a snake game that you can even, got the, it's even got the gesture detector. So I can swipe around to control the snake direction. Awesome, now it looks like it's going through the wall, so that's one issue we have to fix. And the other thing is, what about the food? Hmm, I'm just going to ask it because I don't see the food on the board. Whoops, maybe something's wrong with my internet. Now one trick is, you, you should still have the conversations there on the left, so you can go back to that. But one trick is, you can just paste the entire code in and then just ask your question. So you gave me this code for a snake game earlier, but I think the food position was never set. And then it's telling me it looks like it looks like it is set. Check out the place food method. And so if I look at it, it looks like oh it is actually being set. And this is happening in the initial state as well. So everything should be fine. Let me just restart this. And the food should be red as well. Okay, let's check this out. Oh, there it is. Okay, maybe I just had to rebuild it. So cool, and looks like I can eat this snake as well. Now let's try to fix that problem of walking through the walls. Working great, but I think, but the snake is moving off the screen when it hits the wall. Okay, so it looks like it's just giving me the entire code again with the wall situation fixed. Now this is where we're going to sort of run into some problems for this style of approach in my opinion, which I'll explain in a bit. So let's just code this up. And by code it up, I mean copy it. <laughs> and let's copy the second half. Cool, uh, just get rid of that. Not much to fix here. Okay, so let's try this out. So, looks like I have no problem in my code. Looks like everything is seemingly working fine, but I'm not able to actually play the game. So this is where I think you kind of run into some issues which is, it's cool that it gave me a basic implementation of the snake game. But when I want to build on top of this, you get to a situation where it feels like I'm debugging the AI's code rather than AI debugging my code. And it's definitely possible, but I think it's just a sort of waste of time for me to go through all of this AI's code and make sure everything's right. Because, you know, at that point, I could have just sort of done it myself, right? So the thing about this first approach, which is just to ask it a very simple straight up prompt, like make me a snake game because coding is actually sort of like a creative expression. Like you can have the same snake game implemented in a million different ways, you know, just depending on how you want to think about it. If you have absolutely no idea on how to make it, then just asking it for some ideas uh, is cool. But I think the best way to use chat GPT is to have a basic skeleton outline for yourself. You know, maybe some just bare bones variables that you know are going to be important. 
and then just kind of giving it smaller tasks. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to get rid of everything here and I'm just going to code the bare bones myself. And let's think about a snake game. We're going to need some board dimensions, right? So like how many rows and how many columns? Let's just say like a 10 by 10 for now. And the snake position is going to be a list of integers. And also we have to account for some directions, right? So it's the possible snake directions. If we just create an enum at the top, it's going to be left, right, up, down. And so at the beginning, let's just set it to be right. And the other thing is we probably need a food position. And then we have to have some sort of start game method. Cool, and in the scaffold, we're gonna create a similar grid. And for the cross axis count, just however many columns we have. And the item we're gonna build here is a tile. And this tile I actually created before the video. It's just a simple container that takes in a boolean so depending on if the light is on we're going to display a white tile and then a gray tile if it's not okay so if i just say maybe change the background to black this is the grid i want to play this snake game on okay so this light on i can change from false to true and so let's display the snake using a lit up tile and for the item count let's do row count times column count and so if we are in the snake position, then bring in the lit up tile. And otherwise it's just going to be a blank tile. Okay, cool, so there is our snake. So that's the snake position, zero, one, two, three. And those numbers are just starting from the top, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on. Okay, cool, so my opinion is when you're trying to say, for example, make a snake game, is to at least have some thought for yourself on how you're going to design the architecture for the game, you know, and what I mean is just the basic skeleton of the game, because then it becomes very easy to ask ChatGPT some specific questions. For example, I want to implement this start game method. Okay, so there's the button at the bottom. So if I click it, then we want to execute the start game method, right? So it's at this point where I think asking the ChatGPT to implement the start game is where it's really helpful because it's going to use my variables that I predefined, right? Instead of introducing too many new ones that I have to wrap my head around. So we don't even need the entire code. I'm just going to grab these main variables. So let's say I set up the basics of a snake game. I want to code using Flutter and then just paste the main uh, variables here. Maybe I should include this enum direction, but at the same time, maybe not because it's pretty smart chat GPT. So if I say like direction dot right, it kind of assumes that there's left, right, up, down. So yeah, let's just try to see what it says. Can you code for me this start game function, start game method? Cool. And you can see, yep, <laughs> it just implicits those directions, which is really cool. Okay, sweet. Now we have this start game method. I'm going to just copy it and paste it. And there was a few more variables that it created for us. So these game variables, yeah, that's probably going to be important. So let's just grab those and import this timer and this random and just fix all the red squiggles. And it's looking good. So let's just test this out. And it looks like it's not working. I wonder why. Oh, and I saved it and it moved actually left instead of right. And oh, I see. So it's changing the position of the zeroth index. So the very first number is the one that's getting updated. I see, I see. So that means the very first number, we, we should switch this around because we're actually going to the right. Okay, that makes sense. So if I click play, looks like it is moving, but it's not really updating every time. Wait, did they even include a set state here? No, there's no set state. We have a timer going, but it never updates the the UI. Okay, so let's just set state at the end of the timer. And there it is, sweet, it's working, cool. Now you can see like, there's still more things to fix, but even when you come across a problem, it's easier to diagnose your own code. You know, even though the AI generated this code, it's using my variables. So it's a little bit more easier to understand 
and see what's going on. Cool. Now it looks like I actually need those swipe gestures to control the snake. So let's come back to ChatGPT and just ask it how to do it. Just while that's just while that's working on its own. Let's come back to the board and if you look at this grid, it's kind of scrollable, which I don't want. So you can change this physics to be never scrollable. Good, that's what I want. And this should have a food as well, which I forgot. So let's include a food tile, which I should actually create real quick. It's just going to be a container that's just green. Okay, sweet, there it is. Cool, so yeah, now we just need to control the direction. So let's see how ChatGPT went. Nice. So, yep, using the gesture detector. Cool, now I actually wanted it to implement the gesture detector part of the code. Oh, it actually looks like it got cut off, you can see there. So I'm just gonna tell it to continue. And there it is, that's what I was looking for. So we're going to wrap the scaffold in a gesture detector. Underneath, just copy all that. And let's just clean this up. So I think the handle swipe method is at the top. Cool. And what is this swipe direction? For us, our enum was actually called capital direction like this. So let's just clean this up. And let's test this out. And sweet, it works. And even the eating the food works. Our snake is actually growing. So this is how you use ChatGPT. Now, if I run into myself, then it looks like it stopped because I died. So now I'm going to need a pop-up dialogue for the game over. Cool, so I'm gonna just leave it at there, but you can, you can imagine we can continue building from this, right? Just every problem and every feature that you come across, you're just asking ChatGPT to code it up. Now for this, my goal is less uh, about making a tutorial for this particular video. It was just more about showing you a glimpse into like how a programmer would use ChatGPT to code their stuff. And I showed you two different approaches today, which was the first one being like a very simple, but kind of sort of immense task, you know, just asking it, can you code me a snake game? Uh, which I think is good for generating ideas and stuff like that if you're really stuck and have no idea on how to code it. But I feel like that actually creates more problems in the future where, as I kind of mentioned before, uh, I feel like you get to a position where I'm sort of spending so much time debugging the AI's code, just trying to understand what, what they did, as opposed to the AI debugging and fixing my code. So uh, the second approach I showed you just then, which I think is a much more efficient way to kind of go about it, which is to think about the basic skeleton, like the basic architecture of the game, at least some variables for you to know that the game should have or the app needs. And then just getting the, and then just getting ChatGPT to fill out, you know, a few methods here and there and stuff like that. It kind of, I feel like that makes it easier for you to already have the program in your head wrapped together. Uh, I feel like that is a more productive way to go about it. But I'd love to hear from anyone who is watching this video to comment how you use ChatGPT for your coding, but I guess for your work in general, because I think this AI stuff is uh, is changing the game up a lot. So I'll hang out in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.